guys, this is Lauren Hollows from NOI Education Services. And today we are talking about the student is not competent, they are not satisfactory, how to have that conversation with a student. So there is circumstances um, where we get students who just for whatever reason are going to struggle in completing the course. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that it's, it's very, very crucial that we have enrollment processes in place where we're identifying student needs beforehand. Um, certainly I've worked and, and I've worked with trainers and I've worked in RTOs and things like that where there wasn't a strong enrollment process um, or where there wasn't a strong enough process between the, the person doing the enrollment and the communication with the trainer about the needs of the student when it came to classroom time. So one of the things that you need to look at is that process within your RTO. If you're constantly getting issues between like trainers and administration, trainers and BDMs, administration and BDMs where suitability of students is an issue, that's a separate conversation to have. However, you will occasionally get a student in a classroom that, you know, is just, just, just is not competent. They have completed all of the assessments, but the quality is not there. They're not suitable for it. Like they're not suitable for industry. They just have not been able to demonstrate and I'm not talking about like the first time round because the vast majority of times, certainly like on theory assessments, I would think most students need to go through two or three versions before they get to satisfactory. There's normally little things because we obviously work in 100%. As we're doing practical assessments, I often find that I'm like having to kind of, you know, go back to students a few times and go, hey, look, that's looking really good, but I need to see you tweaking this or, hey, you know, when you're talking to people, can you just try and keep this in mind? Um, so, you know, it, there's always like that back and, back and forth process, but then there are occasions where the student is just simply not as a trainer, you've worked with them enough that you know that they're not going to get to that point. Um, and so that's the, that's the point at which like you've had multiple conversations with the student, they're really struggling and you now need to actually start looking at like bringing, um, your support team into that, that will look different across different RTOs for some RTOs. That might mean bringing in your quality, your compliance person. It might be bringing in a consultant. It might mean bringing in the, the CEO or the RTO manager. It might mean bringing in, um, you know, like the head or like your one of your senior trainers or the head of the department, things like that. Um, but there is a couple of things that you should be doing if you're going to go down the route of just saying to the student, like, no, you're not competent. So the first thing, obviously, is that we do want to give students multiple opportunities in order to demonstrate competence. This is part of like fairness and flexibility. So, you know, one of the things that we wanna be looking at is, is like, does the student really understand the assessment? Do they really understand what it is that they're supposed to be demonstrating, All right? Because normally this is not theory. Normally this comes down to like practical skills theory. If you work with students enough, like they will get across the line, but with practical skills, sometimes the students just really, they're, they're not gonna get there. Um, and particularly often it's like within a time frame sort of thing. So the first thing that you want to do is, is you want to make sure that the student has a clear understanding of what the assessment is. Go back and make sure that they're really clear on that. Then you want to document all of the opportunities that the student has had to actually demonstrate competency. And as I said, like if it was a one and done sort of thing, that's really hard. Um, you know, usually even in like one day courses, students will have two or three opportunities to be able to demonstrate a skill. So let's say they've had those two or three opportunities. They have not yet achieved, they have not yet demonstrated the skills competently sufficiently. Um, you know, potentially that there's still a safety risk or, you know, they're, you know, they're not demonstrating it to industry standards. Um, you know, they're not demonstrating it to the competency standards really more than anything. So as I said, make sure you document the, the multiple opportunities. And also you want to be at this point documenting the feedback that you've provided to them at each of those points, right? This is why feedback is really important. 99% of feedback happens verbally. Um, with the exception of like online training, the vast majority of feedback that goes to students is like a verbal back and forth that's happening Kind of like live coaching in time so you want to document all of that once you've made the decision to, to to go with not competent then you need to be working with your rto and kind of document the reasons as to why and obviously this is going to specifically boil down to the um 
the the performance evidence, the knowledge evidence, the performance criteria that was not satisfied. Okay. And as a trainer, you actually need to be able to articulate that really well. And if you have good marking guides, like good assessor guides, this is where those are going to come into play because certainly like if, it, if it's me going through this process, at that point, I'm going through the marking guide and I'm highlighting the areas where I'm like, they haven't demonstrated this. They haven't demonstrated this. They haven't demonstrated this. Um, so we've then got like a really comprehensive idea as to what the skills are that haven't been demonstrated. My personal preference at that point, working with the RTO is going to be putting forward like a comprehensive plan for like final opportunity of retraining and reassessment. And then depending on like the model that you guys are working in at the RTO's discretion, there may be fees that are attached to that. So like in the example that it's a one day fee for service course, there's likely going to be reassessment fees that are attached to that in the, you know, if it's fry cost, that's another one. If it's um, like a traineeship that's funded, um, it's less likely that you can actually go down the path of charging fees. But certainly what you want to be doing at that point is kind of laying out a really comprehensive plan for the retraining that is going to occur for the student and the gaps of the skills that they're going to have to. And this is like the kind of the, the last measure. Now, obviously, in the case that there is a charge for that, um, it's then the student's decision or the employer's decision or whoever is paying as to whether or not the student wants to go down that pathway. If they do want to go down that pathway, um, it needs to be just, you just need to communicate. Like you should be communicating to them. The RTO should be communicating to them. You should be following that up with written documentation to say, hey, this is, you know, this is the retraining that's going to be provided. This is what we would like you to do. This is your responsibility. These are the areas that we're seeing the gaps in. This is what we need to see you demonstrate in order to for us to be able to deem you competent. And as I said, that's really like where your assessor's guide should be a Bible for you guys of like very, very clearly identifying. Now, if you look through that assessor's guide and you can't pick out anything that they haven't demonstrated, why are you making the call that they're not competent? Right. So it's a check for yourself as well that it's not something else that's coming into it. The assessor's guide outlays what needs to be seen. And so therefore, you know, you should be going through that. Now that's obviously on the basis that the assessor's guide and the mapping guide meet the unit of competency. So if one of the things that you're looking at is you're looking at and going, we haven't demonstrated this, you know, and it's something that's actually not assessed in the assessment, that's going to have to be a separate process with the RTO. Um, and that's where, again, look, unfortunately, assessors in this particular circumstance can get stuck between a rock and a hard place. But ultimately, you're the one deeming competency. And so therefore, you need to um, observe and evidence that by the student. If the RTO's assessment tools are not sufficient, if they've got no assessor's guide and there's no benchmarks, um, that's a separate discussion to be had with the RTO of going like, look, you know, you've got assessor's guides, they're wrong, they're, you know, you don't have them. Um, that's a separate conversation to be had. So, um, but that that's kind of the process that you want to go forward with the student. Um, in the case that they chose to go through with like a final version of reassessment, I would be encouraging you to have that done in writing. Um, I know certainly within like the cry cost space, I do, and, and also through like the secondary kind of the vet and school sort of stuff, we use independent education plans um, where we'll document a lot of this sort of thing of, of, you know, that kind of that back and forth and that support process that happens with the students. So that's, the conversation that I would then be having with the student, getting the sign off by the student. And then if you get to a point where like they had two or three opportunities the first time round, retraining occurred, um, they still weren't able to demonstrate competency, you know, that's where you kind of have to make a decision. And if, if at that point the student is definitely not competent, that's you need to then make the call or the act that's when you need to hand it back to the RTO and have the RTO make the call as to whether or not the student should proceed with any training. Um, 
you know, if they are going to proceed with training, it's it's knowing that they are not going to achieve X. And certainly like we've, I've worked with RTOs where we've put students there and we've gone, well, look, you're going to achieve 12 out of 15 units in the qualification. And, you know, there, there were re like there were reasons why they weren't going to achieve the other units. And sometimes that was due to emotional issues. Sometimes it was due to health issues. Sometimes it was due to physical issues. Sometimes it was due to the fact that like, you know, they, we, we knew that based on certain things, histories that they weren't going to be able to work in a particular area of the industry. And you, like, there's lots of reasons why students might choose to do 90% of a qualification, knowing that they can't get the other 10% um, if it's going to give them opportunities in other areas. So that's kind of, um, that's the process that we go through for talking, um, talking to students about deeming them not competent. Uh, it's definitely a process where you should be working hand in hand with the RTO. And I would certainly hope that you would be receiving support from the RTO in, you know, them backing you as the trainer on the decision that they've made. Um, in the next video, we will talk about what you do when you get pushback from your RTO and having them ask you to sign off things that you don't feel comfortable signing off. So that is it from me today. My name is Lauren Hollows for NOI Education Services. If you did like this video, if you found it helpful, please push the like, the subscribe, the notifications, all that good stuff. Um, it helps us keep bringing you guys lots of content, which we obviously bring you guys heaps of content for free. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background in order to get that out to you. So if you can support us, the best thing you can do is push the like and subscribe and share this with your friends. And thank you very much. Have a great day. I'm Lauren for NOI Education Services.